Hello, welcome back to Modern Guitar Harmony, and we have Johannes Hager here to talk about his new album, Cycles, with his trio Drift, and it's currently being prepared for release at the beginning of December, and you'll be able to see it very soon on his website. And we'll put a link to that on the Modern Guitar Harmony webpage. Welcome again, Johannes, and thank you for sharing your time so generously with us. We've had a good conversation before we've started here, and um, that's why we're smiling a bit, I think. There's a lot to talk about. But Thank your new you. album's called yeah. Cycles, and it's it's a mixture of original compositions, all with various titles involving cycles, and some standards, which is a lovely mix. Could you just say some general observations about your album and how you made it? It's, it's the fourth album of this trio, and we've been working together for over 10 years. and um we made another album called wings not so long before this and like all the other albums on that one we played original music my music and joe smith the drummer's music and for for this cycles recording we decided to not play any compositions of ours like tunes that we wrote but we would only play standard tunes and play freely improvised music and also use a couple of uh, cycles, harmonic cycles um, that I put together. It's something that I'm always interested in. And it's basically just constant uh, chord structures, three part chord structures going through symmetrical cycles that I found interesting and were, you know, were interesting little harmonic, melodic things would pop up through just, you know, going through cycles and stuff. So the, the original recordings you were referring to is actually just like kind of like sketches of cycles that I put together. So, mm -hmm. yeah, I mean, they, I, I wrote them down, but I wouldn't say I'm the composer of them really, you know. Okay, okay. So structured and pre-prepared improvisations, improvisations from some preparation. Yeah, with, I mean, with these cycles, we would sometimes just kind of go, just play them and play them differently every time or, or start improvising in between or go back and forth or a lot of times um, what's on the page is just what I play and what the chords are, you know, and, and Matthias and Joe would have the freedom to do whatever they want around it. And yeah. So I'm, I'm looking at your track listings here and we've, We've got a few of examples of the things that you took into the studio with you to record. And we've got cycle three minor major seventh. And I'll share the screen. Hopefully this will go on to the recording too. And cycle three minor major seventh. Mm -hmm. So you brought this to the studio. It's a two line sketch and you're using this as the vehicle for the improvisation. Right. Well, the, the idea with this is cycle three means um, moving through uh, uh, the chromatic space in major thirds, right? So going from C to E to A flat back to C kind of, you know, if you start on C. So with this movement, I took two kinds of chords. One is the is a minor major sound with no five in like a spread or drop two um, voicing. And the lower line is the same idea, but with a major seven, like a major sound, but in, in a close voicing. So um, it's just that movement of going from minor C minor to E minor to A flat 
Maya and back. So it just cycles back, you know. That's what the first line is. And then you just by just from doing that, you see that there's, you know, room for you know, the middle line, for example, the C goes to D sharp. So there's like a potentially a note in between. So you can put a D in the middle. That's one potential melodic pathway there. So, you know, you go like, right? Mm -hmm. Or the top note could go down. Um, right? Or both could. So that's the, that's the black notes in between. That's just optional uh, voice leading notes in between those chords. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So the idea is to um, uh, go from one chord sound to the next, maybe use those notes one or both of them at the same time. The tempo is free, you know. Um, yeah, it's just a, it's just a starting point to for you know for playing. That's what the idea is, and and then um, the minor and the major, like the first line, the second line, is just two different colors, basically, right? So when you're you know maybe you want to go from this minor major sound to to a major and you know the, the second line is you know this, this is e major uh, c major and then going to e major going to a flat major you know and you can connect those with Make sense? It does. I noticed that none of the connecting notes use the thirds of the chords, so they stay the same in both lines. Just quick observation. Say it again. What? what, none, what, what none of your quarter notes are using the thirds of the chords, so they stay the same in both lines. That's interesting. The third of the chord. Yeah, the third of the chord is the one that stays. Yeah. And it is the, the root of the next chord. That's just the nature of the cycle. Yeah, of course, because it's a major third cycle. Yes. So going from C major to E major, of course, the E stays in the middle here, right? Like, and, but the other ones, both um, move a third. Right? Yes. So you put one note in between of yes. them. So either you just go like, or the lower one, or yes. both. And then similarly, from 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 E, the third stays and becomes the A flat, the the yes. root of the next chord. You know, yes. and then. From that, the C stays here, becomes the next root. So it's it's like a, it's a circle. It just repeats, like we talked about. It's like the 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 snake that bites its own tail. Yeah. The cycle three. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that that's just an example of um, just using one kind of chord structure, the seventh note five, in in just one particular sound. And taking it through a symmetrical cycle, yeah. Um, just working with the, um, the voice leading and the 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 melodic material that comes out of that cyclic or cyclical movement. You know, I find that very interesting. It's almost like you're taking taking a step back and just observing what what comes out of in a harmonic strategy or something and then 
take whatever you want. And just on a purely practical level, are you staring at this score in the studio when you are improvising or are you thinking of it as it internalized? Um, yeah, it's, it's basically internal. Now I'm kind of looking at it because it's, it's been a while and I want to explain. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And, um, but sometimes it's helpful to, to kind of see the movement too, like maybe look at it every once in a while, but usually it's, 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 it's intuitive and yeah. I don't really like to stare at, uh, it's uh, charts like that when, when mm -hmm. playing. It's an interesting area to explore generally. I've had a few conversations recently about some people who seem to have a visual idea of even a memorized score and they are envisaging the notes. And I think it was Ben Monda mentioned the fact that um, he doesn't visualize the fingerboard. I, I, I'm not sure if he visualizes notes or not, but uh, a visual pattern of the fingerboard in your mind or a visual pattern of a score in your mind. Some, some people I've spoken to almost seem to have a display in front of their, their eyes, almost it's like Google glasses or something, showing them an image of uh, a score. It's just yeah, like you read, you read the score in your mind. In your mind, yeah. Yes. Yeah, the actual yeah. notes. Yeah. I know that some people, um, some people, my, people's minds work like that, and you would you would think that classical players' minds work like that, but and I've yeah I've asked quite a few classical guitar players, and a lot of them don't mm -hmm. do that. Yeah, you know, interesting. I find. Interesting, because it's it, you would think like they they read so much music, but a lot of people. I mean, I I know a couple of classical players who are not that great of readers. You know, they 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 just um, they just are really good at learning stuff by heart and yeah. So yeah, yeah, it's interesting. Going back to the... do do you have a do you have a visual visual image of the fretboard when you play or i think i've got some visual imagery of the fretboard where the notes are and especially the intervallic steps across the fingerboard right. uh, the, the thirds and fifths and sixths fourths and sixths across yeah. the individual frets um but it's not particularly um, high res I, I get the impression that i've i've got a mildly visual memory but it's it's far more th theoretical i think it's just conceptual so right it's um it, it's not um it's not missing but i know people who don't seem to have a visual imagination it's there's a there's a term for it now aphantasia no visual imagination aphantasia aphantasia yeah where you, you can't no visualize the garden path or the, the the guitar case with the catches on it or something so it's a it's a different um that's a different thing entirely, I think. Going back to your other pieces with the title cycle, I'll just read a few of them out and maybe you can comment on them. We've got cycle six in fourths, which sixes and threes are a kind of reversal of one another in that sense, if that makes, if that does make sense. If yeah, so you, yeah, cycle, th I mean, uh, the, the, the number is always the ascending direction of the yes of the movement, right? The root movement. Um, so cycle six would be going up a major six. Oh, there it is. You put oh, it. Up. Right, you got it. Um, yeah. So you go. You could also call it going down minor thirds. Yeah. Yeah. So the third and the six is disconnected always. You know, they're complementary um, in that sense. Um, I know in your voice motion book, you encourage us to read the pages vertically and diagonally as well as left. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, that, yeah. That's, that's interesting. So it's a good economy to have the, the reversal option. You can keep everything on half as half as many pages sometimes. It's true. I mean, this one you could you could probably read backwards and have, yeah. you know, cycle. That three, right? Yeah, cycle three then. Yeah. And, yeah, yeah. Your notation for intervals is really useful as well. We've got the cycle and we've also got an intervallic choice. So your chord voicing is 
uh, augmented fourth with a fourth above it in root form, as you would call it, and the right. root form can then be inverted in different ways after that. Yeah, it's just a big question of how to call um, uh, fourth voicings, right? Like, um, and I came, I just, at some point I started just calling them whatever the two fourths are that are stacked. Like if it's two perfect fourths, I would call it four, four. And that would be the root position, just like triads. Like, like a triad is a stacked thir two thirds, right? So we have names for those combinations. And with the fourths, you know, it's, it's, they're so chameleon-like, they're so um, interchangeable. So we call, sometimes we call them sus or whatever, or nine or two chords. And, and I was never satisfied, satisfied with that terminology so i find it best to just call them by their kind of root position fourth stack um uh, construction you know what i mean so so sharp 11 uh, sharp 4 4 is a augmented fourth in the bottom and a fourth on top that yeah. sounds hugely useful I, I can only hear the sus4 voicing in certain inversions, and some inversions feel like they are, they're not a sus4 voicing almost, even though you have the same bag of notes, the same three notes. So yeah, it's I, almost like you judge it, you, you're, putting, you're putting this sus, you're putting this one, one chord in, some, in a drawer there, and you call it sus, but it can, can be so many different things. It doesn't, really, mm -hmm. doesn't really serve the chord or the, the structure. Well, I agree. I agree entirely. So you've noted that this is lovely and clear. You've noted that the first chord, the C sharp mm -hmm. four four. You've got the sharp four in the lower voice. Likewise, the A, and then the G flat has the sharp four in the upper pair of intervals. Yeah. So this, I'm not fair. I'm not 100 consistent here. Like the the third chord is the other one. Like with the with the with the um with the augmented one on, on the, in the top. Yeah, yeah. I mean, the, in set theory terms, those are interchangeable anyways, because they're, you know, intervallically, um, they're counterparts or inversions. They call it inversions. It's confusing sometimes, but, you know, they're the same, or they're the same tone clock hour, you know? Yeah, got you. Got they're, you. they're very, very related, hour five chords, so. And the slightly smaller notes with the D augmented, E diminished, D flat diminished, they are passing chords again, the same way as the previous example had? Yes. Yeah, so um, this is, you know, this started with just being, you know, C going to A. Yeah. And then there's the, the G flat. Uh, sorry, this one. And then E flat, and then you can just cycle back going. That's the four chords. And then I just kind of checked, you know, what could be a passing sound in between when there's bigger leaps, you know? So I just kind of liked the way that, that going from this to to this, I kind of like the, I like that transition and it just turned out to be a D augmented chord, you know? Cool it, sounds, they really are. And from A, you want to end up here, you know, you could go, um, it's just the way that the voices move chromatically to end up there, you know? And that's just, that just happens to be a E diminished. Yeah. And, you know, if you're going from here to there, 
take the lower voice down and the two other voices up and then you end up there and then that could be either E flat uh, a flat major or C minor would be a good transition back to the first chord. But those are just kind of optional passing sounds that you can or cannot you, you, you may use them or or just individual notes if you want from those to connect or yeah. yeah. I've already spent an hour or two with some of this material and I can certainly recommend it to anyone else as mm -hmm. great food for thought and it's creative, melodic and musical material, which also has the nice added benefit of really putting your hands into some new positions and you mm -hmm. find some chords you've never played before and ideas you haven't used before. So it's, it's really creative, useful material. Um, when when you're playing with um, Matthias, is he playing from the chords or is he playing from the bass roots on this? What's what's his response to these? That's a good question. No, I, I mean, um, a lot of times he, I mean, he also has the chart, um, but we're just trying to be intuitive. I mean, I have this stuff that I'm, you know, I'm, I'm really kind of close to the material and trying to, I'm trying to deviate maybe or, or go off, but I sometimes I would just play that and, you know, play less maybe or play just one note or, you know what I mean? What I just described. And, but with bass, the bass and the drums, they're, they're free to go around and, and react to this. So I think Joe was not using the charts for the drums at all. Like he was just kind of reacting to it in the great intuitive way that he does his thing. And then, yeah. So sometimes he, I think maybe he looked at the chord symbols. I mean, with, with the fourth chords, that's not a very conventional thing. So reading C, E flat, G flat, you know, just reading it as like chord changes doesn't make any sense. Oh. Anyways, but so, um, yeah, I think maybe he, I think he kind of had his own idea of what the sounds meant to him from take to take. So, yeah, I'll pull up one more of your charts and then maybe we'll talk a little about the standards. This mm -hmm. isn't on the album, but you showed me this. This is your um, blues cycles yeah. get the page on in a second. I can't talk and click. Um, Oh, yeah, it's interesting because this one. Great, I've got it. This one actually is the same. It's the same structure that we just talked about, right? It's, it's the sharp four or four. Yes, it is. That's right. Yeah. So you're applying this to a blues as a an etude almost. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so the story here is that the the last couple of gigs that we did this summer, we pulled out the cycles here that we did in the recording, and some of them that we they didn't really work so well anymore. Like, but this is some new stuff and this one really worked well. And another one, Swamp, I think I, I sent it to you as well. Um, yes. And this one is, you know, not so free in the sense that, you know, you can play around it, but it is based on a, on a blue structure. And, and um, the way this is, this came, how it is just I I had similar to the next uh, to the last one I had you know this structure again this is this you know from C the same structure from C the C F sharp B yes. and I was just putting it through this cycle three which is major thirds right so it was C E yeah that. So just for for um, you know for reference, I mean this 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 chord structure has these inversions, right? Yeah. yeah. Um, sorry, this. May I interrupt for one second? Are you voicing the fourth chord, the second chord of bar two, an octave higher than written? 
Boop, boop, boop. Yeah. Again, which yeah. one? The A flat, B, C, F, the fourth chord in the sequence. Did you voice that at the 13th fret? No, I, I was just, I was, when I was just playing, I was not playing the, the song. I was just explaining ah, the, yeah. the, the inversion. So I'm just saying like this, 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 the C sharp four, four chord has four, has these inversions, right? Ah, got you, got you. So just to explain what the cycle means, like the, the, this cycle would be to, I understand. You know, voice lead closely going from this structure from the from the root, so to speak, C, right? Yes. To the root E. This. Yes. To A. Yes. Right. So it's it's this root. The root movement is. Major thirds. So when okay. I play this, um, it's yes. really bluesy to me. I was like, okay, this is really like, you know, it sounded like F blues to me. So that was. Oh, lovely. Now that's my question. What's that last chord? Because how do you voice that? That's a strange chord. Oh, that that is just a. Uh, yeah, the B's open. I've got it. It's, a, it's just a minor F minor chord with the okay. with the added B, like a F minor. Um, I see. Yeah. Is it sharp eleven or something? So it's from the the lowest string. It would be thirteen. Uh, what's happening? What's happening? So this is just an F minor chord yep. on the A, D, and G string, first yep. inversion. And that kind of gives me the option of the B string. Oh, yes, I see it now. I, see I go it. like this. I get this nice rub. Yeah, yeah, got you. I just I wanted to land on the on a F minorish bluesy chord, and it, that one has enough rub to. So it's the middle. Oh, with the other string. one, all, all the other ones are so dense. Yeah, yeah. Right? So I, I thought you know. Somewhere between Jim Hall and Derek Bailey, but it's <laughs> constant at the same time. It's it's lovely. There's some there's lots going on there. That's that's an unusual voicing of F minor with a fifth. Yeah, octave. like the, the fifth and the sharp four or whatever. Yeah. Sharp four. Yeah. And then and then I thought you know and then I was like how can I go from go to B and and I found that if you just do the the same thing sort of half a step higher. You know, say, yeah. Yeah. Um, so that's basically that. It's just the same idea. Lovely. That one goes a little bit out of the yeah. out of the cycle, um, but it works for for B flat. Works for me. It's the same. It's still the same chord structure. B flat thirteen sharp nine. Yeah. It's like mm. minor. It's like a nine and a minor third and a thirteen. I don't know. I think it. Got the minor second in it, yeah. Works for me. Okay. Back to F. And then for the for the resolution there for C. You know, I I liked this for C with the flat nine. Which is basically, uh, if you you know, it's still the same chord structure, but it's, it's like a D flat, like the the sharp eleven, the sharp four, and the four from the D flat build up from the D flat, and this one is built up from E, which gives you gives you those sharp nine and three and seven if you look at it from C, and then it just kind of. Oh, 
differently. Do the same move again. In the bottom of the page, now it's not on the screen, but it's that that root movement is. Oh, there you are. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So basically, what I'm, you know, this stuff um, to me it has very strong unity because it's only one kind of chord, except that you know that F minor is a different, you know, obviously that's just kind of like my tonic or something. Mm -hmm. But the all all the other chords are just that one chord structure, and you know, except those couple of artistic freedom, free <laughs> pockets of artistic freedom, it's all the same root movement also, you know, it's, it's the cycle three. So it has this very strong structure, which holds it together in my ear. I, I find it very fascinating. It's almost like I just kind of discovered that and, and, uh, and, found one way of hearing it which is like the blues context in the in this case yeah yeah and have this cycle can have very various other contexts but i i thought that was kind of a cool context to you know to play it in that in that zone from a, from a teacher's viewpoint getting dissonance into a conventional structure like the blues is a useful stepping stone to helping students make that step from playing safe, correct notes to dangerously sounding dissonance, which is still correct and still perfectly acceptable and good mm -hmm. jazz practice. But you're, you're getting something that sounds um, a little further out. It's very hard to make a nasty sound on the guitar. I think perhaps Frank Zappa said that once, but uh, consonance isn't necessarily the only option on guitar dissonance sounds really good oh yeah yeah of course right something that's kind of monk bill frizzell Derek bailey there with still that one four five blues sequence it's right so many of the good guitarists that you hear tal Farlow, jim hall are still kind of into that dissonance zone on standards it's a good connection back to the other material on your album because you you picked a, a selection of standards, um, Bewitched, um, Remember. I don't know the composer of Remember. Um, and then there's a Cole Porter one. Um, I'm just trying to find my track listings. I've lost them. I think Remember is an Irving uh, Berlin tune. Ah, yes. Yes, you said. And um, there's another early period standard from from the same time as, as Irving Berlin, isn't there? What's what's the other one? Uh, After You've Gone. Mm -hmm. One of the older standards again. Lazy River, Hoagie. Oh, there's two Hoagie Carmichael tunes. Um, there's Lazy River and another one. What was the other one? Um, Bewitched Hoagie Carmichael too. Don't no, Bewitched is Richard Rogers, I would say. No, it's not, okay. No. But Easy to Love's the Cole Porter one. Right. It was after you've gone, Berlin. I don't think so. Maybe. I think it's Turner Turner Layton wrote it. Okay. That's what I what it says in the liner notes. <laughs> anyway. Oh thank you, Chris. Yeah. <laughs> I haven't mentioned my favorite yet, which is my one and only love. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I thought we would might might start start by chatting about that a little. Um, sure. Do something a little unusual with it, and it's it, in my ears. It brings it into a contemporary feel. It makes it feel, you know, very much part of our current approach to harmony, current approach to melody. And you're using effects. You're using a stripped down chord sequence. Right. Yeah, with that one, um, I mean, one one thing is I I I, I used a pedal called Counter Five on on it's a mountain what uh, Canadian you know this pedal Counter Five anyway it, it's just a cloudy I I just dialed in like a nice cloudy uh, sound uh, and and that was kind of the idea of the of, of one of the takes there and but harmonically um 
I brought a or I, I brought a chart for this tune that that um, was just harmonically as simple as I could possibly get it. Um, so instead of you know. Uh, doing something where, you know, where usually, where you go, usually take the tune. Um, I tried to figure out, um, you know, if, if, if we could play it with just like the, the, the primary harmonic colors, one, four, and five, and maybe the parallel minor, or, you, you know, you know, instead of I try to do that a lot, and, and just to kind of get to know tunes. Instead of instead of the two the two chords, I always play the four, or you know, just to be very clear, and just use those. And it you know can sound sometimes it doesn't really work that well, but some and and it definitely um, is very simple. But with this one, I think it's very cool because it really reveals the the structure of the. The tune so it, it can get very campfire style but you know it's like uh, you know and then it just goes to it's all four or five one There actually it goes to the minor, I would say. You know what I mean? Like it's, you can kind of boil it down to for the tonic subdominant dominant movement. So we kind of took it from there, you know. It illustrates how good a good melody is, I think. That too, yeah, yeah. You you begin just with the melody, very freely, very open phrasing, um, on on that and on a couple of the other standards, and I I like the approach a lot. It's it's very. Uh, attractive. Yeah, with, I mean, with the with this harmonic thing, just stripping it down to the one four five, it doesn't mean like you have to do it. You have to stick to that, and you, you can certainly kind of put back other chords, but it's cool to kind of have that structure clear and not start with essentially um, alteration, you know? Yeah. You know I mean? Or added in chords really, which which those are, you know, most of them that we it's know. It's kind of reverse process to the usual chord substitution, which complexifies the harmony and adds complexity. Yeah, a lot of times we start with, you know, the way Stella is played, like, af you know, after Miles, Bill Evans or whatever, and or other stuff, you know, and we don't start with kind of the original ways. Or, I mean, this is kind of taking the original and even simplifying that kind of deliberately to yeah. see if it works to with the simple chords but for me it's 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 very re revealing a lot of times yeah a quick question we i know we're running a little short of time now um oh, okay. technique wise in terms of amplification and guitars did you use this howard roberts on the recording or was it a different guitar you chose to use i use this one actually for everything oh, okay. okay so yeah. we see the guitar you used um, with, this, with this band i usually i just play this one it just kind of works well with that sound. So. And would you mic it as well as use the pickup or is it just a, um, a humbucker that you're using? Yeah, I mean, I've mic'd it before, but not for these recordings. We No, I mean, I, I have this old Gibson amp. I've had it for a couple of years now. And it's just perfect for me. It, just, it brings out the acoustic quality and, and, and Wolfgang Schiefermeyer, the um, guy who recorded it, he's so good good at miking with different mics, and it sounds very acoustic, anyways. The you know he's yeah. And just to give a bit of background detail to the recording, it was recorded 
this year in Berlin, am I correct? No, this is what's recorded in 22 in the summer. Okay, great. So it, and it was recorded in, your, in Berlin though? Oh. Yeah. Yes, okay. And I'm just pulling your web page up here again. I'll just show it on the screen to finish the, the recording here. Um, so it's johannhage.com and I'll put a link on the, the main page as well. I think we should be able to see it there now. Mm -hmm. And lots of information about your voice motion book and about your various records. And um, I'd certainly give them a, a strong thumbs up. I've really enjoyed what I've heard so far. I'm going to explore a lot more. I'm looking forward to playing along with the new album with some of the um, charts. It's going to be interesting to All right. think about them as, as I'm hearing them, because uh, they're not the kind of chords that you normally transcribe by ear straight away. So the clues are going to be very, very helpful. So thank you for your generosity sharing these, these scores with us. Today. Oh yeah, and like with what what people think of them, or you know, if there's any comments on yeah. these good kind luck. of things. Yeah, good luck with the album release, and we'll put a, a link to it as soon as it's on your web web page. We'll put a link on Modern Guitar Harmony. Um, oh yeah, so. I have to put up the the cover and stuff. Yeah, thanks. Right. This, this is our second interview. We've had a little conversation as we were doing our extended sound check this morning. Mm -hmm. um, Maybe, maybe we can do another one of these sometime soon, just about the music theory we're both very enthusiastic about. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. I'm, I mean, I'm working on stuff that goes kind of beyond the voice motion stuff. And I mean, I'm doing another project as well, but yeah, let's, let's talk about those things when they materialize more. That's cool. That's some very exciting forthcoming attractions trail there. Mm -hmm. So thank you again for today. It's very generous of you to share your time this morning with us. Yeah, great talking to you again, Mick. <laughs>